We often give teenagers a hard time for being impulsive, emotional, taking risks, too much screen time, or just because they can't get out of bed in the morning. Today, I want to talk about a teenage superpower, their extraordinary capacity for learning and how we can help them to nurture their talents and abilities. Hi, I'm neuroscientist Dr. Ben Webb, and I want to help you cultivate a healthy brain for a mentally healthy and happy life. Welcome to episode 33 of Better Brain, Better You. Hi there, how are you doing today? Thanks so much for choosing to spend time with me. It's very much appreciated. And if you're watching on YouTube, please do subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. And wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google or Deezer, Deezer, wherever it is, we'd love to receive a review from you. We release weekly episodes for brains of all ages. Before we dive into the content today, a quick heads up that next week, Dr. Zoe Webb and myself are hosting a second round of our free live workshop on how to parent the teenage brain. In this workshop, we're going to be sharing our four essential strategies for parenting teenagers. So these strategies can be used to solve common teenage problems, influence challenging teenage behaviours, and support teenagers with their emotional well-being and their mental health. So we'll also be doing a live question and answer session at the end where you can ask us your questions about parenting teenagers. To watch this free workshop, you'll need to register for the live event It's completely free, so please do come and join us. You can find out more about the workshop and how to register at ologyonlinecourses.com parent workshop 2. That's ologyonlinecourses.com parent workshop 2. That's the number 2. We look forward to seeing you at this free live event. Okay, so teenagers are different to adults and their younger siblings because of two unusual aspects of their brains at this stage of development. Their brains are both more powerful and more vulnerable than at virtually any other times in their life. Even as they are learning things faster, their brains are eliminating grey matter and shedding brain cells. And how both of these things can be true is because of something called neural plasticity. No two brains are the same. Every brain is unique, your brain is in essence self-built, and the brain not only serves the functions of a particular individual, but it's also shaped by an individual's experience. And we refer to this unique ability as plasticity. Thinking, planning, learning, acting, all influence the brain's physical structure and functional organisation. And this is neural plasticity in action. In the first few years of childhood, there is a critical period of plasticity in which learning comes quickly and easily. As we get older, this plasticity diminishes, but it never completely disappears because we're still capable of learning new skills at any age. Our learning just tends to be a bit slower compared to when we were younger, when we were a younger child or teenager. But how does this learning actually work? Well, The brain receives information from the senses, hearing, seeing, tasting, touching and smelling. Sensory information is transmitted between networks of brain cells and is stored temporarily in short-term memory. After information is processed in short-term memory, it's compared with existing memories in the brain and if the information matches, it's actually discarded as redundant. Brain space is too limited and too precious to allow duplicate duplicate information to take up valuable real estate. But if, on the other hand, the information is new, then it's sent to locations in the brain that store long-term memories. And the brain is programmed to pay special attention to the acquisition of novel information, which is what learning really is. The more activity between specific sets of brain cells, the stronger the connection between those brain cells. The more a piece of information is repeated or relearned, the stronger the bond between these brain cells become, and the more easily information will flow between them. And the more frequently and the more recently we learn something and then recall it or use it again, the more entrenched the knowledge 
whether it's remembering the route home from school or work or the nine times table, whatever it is. In fact, your brain is forming new connections right now between brain cells as you're listening to or watching this podcast. Only minutes after you learn something new, your brain connections are growing and strengthening their bond with each other. And the teenage brain is the Jedi master of learning. Their brain is way more plastic than an, than an adult's. They learn much faster than adults. And what they learn is retained for much longer than adults. So what this means is they find it much easier to make new memories, which last much longer when acquired during the teenage years compared to later in life. So the teen years are the time to identify your child's strengths, invest in them and support their emerging talents, whether that be in the classroom, on the sports field, on the stage, on the written page or even on social media. It's really important for teens to be challenged and exposed to novelty to facilitate healthy development of brain systems that are important for learning and self-regulation. So the increased levels of brain plasticity during adolescence provides teenagers with the capacity to become functionally smarter during their school years. By their early teens, many children have actually already formed an image of themselves as intellectually capable or not. So it's really important to emphasise for teenagers who doubt their intellectual abilities that past school, past school performance doesn't actually need to be a predictor of future outcomes if they're willing to persist in the hard work that may be required when learning gets challenging. So success in school is actually largely determined by the learning strategies students employ and not so much by some innate talent for academic work. Students across the full range of abilities can learn and improve effective problem solving and study skills to push their grades in the right direction. And a widely held view is that IQ is fixed or that it becomes stable early in life and cannot be changed. This is not true. There's really good scientific evidence that IQ can change during the teen years much more than anyone ever expected. So between 13 and 17 years of age, one third of people's IQs stay the same, one third of people's IQs gets worse, and one third of people significantly increase their IQ. And studies have shown that a teen's brain structure actually reflects this improvement or decline in intellectual performance. So even though teen brains are learning at peak efficiency, other things are less than optimal, including things like their attention, self-discipline, task completion, and emotional regulation. So a good mantra for managing these contradictory teen attributes is one thing at a time. Try not to overwhelm teenagers with too many instructions. Although they're thinking they're thinking good, they think they're good at multitasking, they're actually not very good at it. Encouraging them to stop and think for a moment about what they need to do and when they need to do it will increase activity in the brain areas responsible for switching between different tasks and it will strengthen them as well. So write down instructions as well as telling your team what to do and don't give them too, many, too, many, too much information in one go. Helping them to manage and organise learning tasks with calendars can all help them to manage their, ability, manage their daily school schedules and regularly doing this will help to train their brains to get better at these attributes that facilitate their learning. But perhaps most importantly, set limits with everything that interferes and distracts them from learning. From screen time to socialising to gaming, their hyperactive brain is still learning how to regulate all aspects of their behaviour, but particularly their emotions and thrill-seeking behaviours. So be clear about the amount of time you allow your teenager particularly younger teens and tweens, for virtual and in-person socialising and gaming. This doesn't mean that your teen is going to immediately jump on board with this learning programme. In fact, it's almost guaranteed that there will be hiccups and many mistakes along the way. But the more on top of it you are, the fewer temptations that are available to distract them as they do their homework on their computer the more their brains will learn to do without the constant distractions. Adolescent brains are front-loaded with this enhanced plasticity because their survival actually depends upon knowledge of their environment. 
So their young brain must be flexible and modifiable to quickly adapt to the type of environment they grow up in. The growth of new brain connections makes teens sensation-seeking learning machines. Being open to new ideas, having new things to learn, leads to useful experiences that are necessary for their survival and future prosperity. So before we finish, a quick reminder that Dr Zoe Webb and myself are hosting a free live workshop on how to parent the teenage brain. In this workshop, we're going to be sharing our four essential strategies for parenting teenagers. So these strategies can be used to solve common teenage problems, influence challenging teenage behaviours, and support teenagers' emotional well-being and their mental health. So we'll also be doing a live Q&A session where you can ask us your questions about parenting teenagers. And to watch, to watch this workshop, you'll need to register for the live event. It's completely free, so please do come and join us. We'd love to have you with us. You can find out more about the workshop and register at ologyonlinecourses.com forward slash parent workshop two. That's ologyonlinecourses.com forward slash parent workshop two. We'd love you to join us for this free live event. So I hope today's episode on teenagers' extraordinary capacity for learning was helpful. And thank you so much for spending time with me today. And I will look forward to seeing you next time.